Hi, I'm here to tell you today about the Solarion Hybrid Phase 1 uh, ECG Core Lab as a key to cost-effective thorough QT studies. I'm Bill Wheeler, and I'm the Therapeutic Area Lead in Cardiovascular for Solarion. First, let's talk about thorough QT study execution. Typically, a sponsor has to deal with two vendors, a phase one unit that actually executes the study, and then an ECG core lab. And the traditional ECG core labs are based on late stage trials in patients, many of whom have abnormal electrocardiograms. These ECG core labs then modified their processes to be able to do thorough QT studies. We had the opportunity developing from the ground up a hybrid phase one ECG core lab tailored specifically to thorough QT studies that didn't have many of the restrictions that were necessary for a traditional lab. So let's look at how these studies different, are different a little bit. Uh, late stage uh, studies are typically uh, multi-site. They are often multinational. They're long-term low ECG collection rates. There's a lot of ECG logistics ECG machines have to be shipped to multiple sites. There's custom issues, 24-hour multilingual tech support. Uh, ECG machines may be in the, in the field for long periods of time. ECGs themselves are often abnormal. Um, and all the automated algorithms for reading ECGs have gotten much better. And abnormal ECGs, they're still not quite there. So this necessitates a review of each and every ECG by a cardiologist. And of course, because many of these are from around the world or they have acute ECG requirements, they may require 24-7 potential for a collection and review of ECGs. Thorough QT studies have unique requirements and opportunities. First, they require extreme measurement precision. They're short-term, high-volume ECGs and typically in a single center. They use healthy volunteers and we know that the automated algorithms are more accurate in the healthy volunteers. Uh, they have scheduled ECG acquisition, and most of the data is acquired on 12-lead holters rather than on standalone 12-lead uh, ECG machines. This is a slide that was presented at a recent DIA FDA meeting to make the point that improving the processing of ECGs has little, inf little impact upon the cost of the ECG. As you can see, there's a significant amount of global logistics, as we mentioned, deployment, maintenance and programming equipment, returning equipment, customs, 24-hour customer support. Each site has to be trained individually. There's project management both at the, at the core lab as well as the phase one unit, data management and quality assurance in addition. All of this boils down to the fact that only 8% of the cost of an ECG is related to actually processing the EC, ECG. The rest of it goes to supporting that overhead. ECG analysis consists of extraction, morphology assessment, and interval interval measurement. So a highly automated approach is added on to that cost. In our hybrid phase one ECG core lab, we're able to markedly lower those costs because we don't have to take care of anything besides our own sites. There's no multinational. There's not a lot of ECG machines shipped around the world. So all of those costs are eliminated. Site training is minimized because it's always our sites. Project management, data management, and quality assurance are all under one umbrella. So now the cost of processing an ECG is much greater than 8%. And if you can do things like automate extraction, automate morphology assessment, and then you can do highly automated ECG reading, it's no longer an add-on, it's a cost saver. So this table shows the traditional versus the hybrid lab. As we mentioned, the large infrastructure is necessary to support late stage trials and adds to the overhead of the uh, traditional core lab while we support only our phase one clinics. For the sponsor, typically you have two bidding processes and two contracts because you're working both a core lab and a uh, phase one unit. While with a hybrid lab, you only have one contract. The same goes with study teams, because you typically have traditional core lab with a study team as well as a phase one unit with a study team. With a hybrid lab, there's only the one study team. In addition, we have direct visibility of what goes on in the clinic, because we're actually there when it happens. Our staff is intimately familiar with the ECG machines, so that they don't have to be trained with them every time. And finally, the ECG equipment from a traditional lab is determined by the core lab. And sometimes that's real good equipment, and sometimes there are difficulties with it. We were able to pick um, the Global Instrumentation M12R Holter, which um, has programmable 24 to 48 hour data collection, so that if you have uh, 26 hours or 36 hours of uh, 
ECG collection. You don't have to put in another card and, and uh, get an extra charge for that. Uh, it has central computer data and timestamp, um, so that cuts down queries on that. Pre-configured demographics that can be uh, transmitted to the Holter monitor by the Bluetooth, which decreases uh, queries on demographics. And finally, it uploads the data directly into our system, so there's no querying uh, of uh, cards. So our hybrid lab is built on three pillars. The first is the hybrid lab itself, and the ability to eliminate most of that overhead. The second is the Bluetooth holter that allows us to do safety ECGs without collecting, connecting subjects to an ECG machine and a holter, uh, upload demographics, uh, time and date stamps, uh, and finally the highly automated ECG processes that allow us to have these ECGs from normal individuals, many of them go directly into the database, while only a small percent, about 10%, actually having to be reviewed by a cardiologist. Thank you very much.